They are rooting out the dirty, rotten cheetah with Brian Connolly in half an hour. First on BBC One, Melody's making romantic plans for Halloween. That was yummy. Want some more? No. No. Go on, you're eating for two. Not 200. I still can't believe it, though. <laughs> Our very own baby. <laughs> please, please, can I tell? Just one friend. Absolutely not. Your mates are the biggest gossips around. Oh, I've been so patient. I'm only eight weeks. You're supposed to wait three months. Why don't we buy something, then? Look, a little sailor suit. Tony! Denim dungarees. Every kid needs those. Don't see you wearing them. I wonder what it would be like. One of those kids with thick, nerdy glasses gets beaten up all the time. Or a real bruiser drags me along kicking and screaming to some rugby match. She will like ballet and shopping with Mum. And me. I love shopping. Seriously, I don't care. I want it all. I can't wait to be a dad. Still here. Happy Boots boys. Oh, you're a star. So, what's everyone doing tomorrow night? Oh, I've got the cutest little pumpkin costume for Bracken. She looks like a tiny little... Pumpkin. Yes, ha, ha, ha. You've got some scape. I seem to remember you in your fancy dress last year kissing the wrong gorilla. Yeah, yes. Well, you can't stop there. Tell us more. Absolutely not. This year, I'm letting the whole thing pass me by with a good book and a glass of Chianti. Mm. Oh, isn't that what that bloke drank? That, um... Oh, what's his name? Hannibal... Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are, are you, you doing? Let me guess. Um, a meeting of you and your local fair trade enthusiasts so that you can eat lentils and swap oh-so-spooky stories. And um, what did Leatherbridge's spoiled rotten do at Halloween? Actually, my friends and I are going to a listed manor for a six-course meal. Oh, so I was way off the mark, then. He's mentioned in the Doomsday Book. Well, it sounds doomy to me. Go on, then. What's in the diary of Archie it boy Hallam? Nothing that'd interest you. How about spaghetti a la puttanesca tonight? Lots of garlic, tomato, Sound good? Wonderful. Will you be dining with us? Don't be mean. Ow. I won't eat your spaghetti. See yourself. Funny you're such a good cook. Remember school? I was terrible. That time in domestic science when we were mucking about with the bread dough. And I got it in Miss Johnson's hair. She was so mad at you, her face. Yeah, like a big red tomato. <laughs> I love you and leave you. He's just teasing. Don't let him mind you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie Woodson in the house. Stick to your day job, mate. Yeah. Where's your mum? Defending her honour. I know. I shouldn't let it get to me. I barely know the man. What's happened? Mum's upset the door guy blamed her. Yeah, but he's always been so nice. Forget it, mum. <sighs> I'm sorry. I haven't even thanked you for organising all this. Such short notice. No, it's no problem. It's important now that we're suing the police for harassment. Going public gives you the opportunity to put your side of the story in, hopefully stop some of the tittle-tattle in the local papers. 
I hope so. I could bear it if all this work I've done went up in smoke. Oh, come on, this isn't the council of Havily we know and love. You tear strips off people who don't agree with her. You eat journalists for breakfast. I seem to remember her getting the better of a certain solicitor once. Once. Alex? I don't know if I have the fight. Well, look, I'll do most of the talking. Take some of the pressure off. Thanks for sticking by us like this. Yeah, I'll bring them in. So, how are you holding up? I was hoping something a bit more rock and roll. Ah, yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. We can't pick and choose what we diagnose. You were right, though. Just wish it had been RSI. Did you have enough time to talk things through with the consultant? Yeah. He told me a little bit about the drugs I can take, something about a diet. Yes, a high calorie one is best for people with Huntington's. Rapid weight loss can be a problem. That's great. I'll stay lean and mean. Well, it's good that you're so positive. I can cope with what's ahead. A couple of twitches, being a bit clumsy. You do realise there are going to be challenges. You will have to adapt your lifestyle considerably. No problem, Doc. Have you got support at home? Well, it's me and David Tennant. My Doctor Who collection. I've got it covered. Well, you know where we are. <coughs> I didn't want to live forever anyway. I intend to be a beautiful corpse. Yeah, I totally understand why you'd want to invite him instead of me. No, I mean, he treated you so well, after all. And I suppose that dreadful dinner at the motorway cafe is all forgotten. Yeah, fine. Oh, great, like flies on trifle. Excuse me? Here to revel in my misery. I was just on the way to the gents. <sighs> My so-called third best friend has decided to invite her ex-boyfriend to the dinner. So? What, you're jealous? You find the idea of romance so disgusting? No, she's invited him instead of me, and now I'm the only single girl. Oh, well, look on the bright side. It'll give you time to contemplate why that is. Contemplate? Not me. I'm going to think of something far more exciting to do. Well, best of luck. Is that all you've got to say? I need a pee. <sighs> so what do you fancy, then? There's a new art exhibition on, or we could go and see a film. I don't mind. Tony won't be up for the art, though. Remember what he said about Jackson Pollock? When did Tony get invited? He's waiting on a job. Was it a loose end? But I took a day off so we could spend some time together. I know, but it'll be fun with the three of us. But fun is not having to babysit grown men. Listen. I'm fine, it's just a twinge. <laughs> Try and make an effort, Sal. <laughs> I do. It's just sometimes it'd be nice if it was just the two of us. He practically lives here. It's not that bad. He's got his own keys, towels, toothbrush and personalised holder. Which you hate because it's nicer than yours. <laughs> oh, come on. It's important we all get along. I know. Just back me up in court when I say it was a mercy killing. OK. As some of you probably know, my client, Quinn Haverly, was arrested by the police for possession of cannabis. Do you condone drug-taking, Councillor? Nobody's saying that, but let's face it, Quinn probably isn't the first youth from Leatherbridge to be caught with pot. First son of a Tory councillor. Yeah, but he shouldn't be treated differently from anybody else, should he? The last thing the Haverleys <laughs> are asking is for any special treatment. But what they do expect is that the police should follow due procedures. Now, when Quinn was arrested, he was with a group of friends, all of whom were in possession of a similar amount of the drug for personal use. So why was Quinn singled out? Now, the family accept that the police are entitled to hold Quinn overnight. What they don't accept is that the same CID officer then put Quinn under surveillance. And his crime? Well, there wasn't one. Now, a young man, Carl Lammas, tragically killed himself under the influence of drugs. But there was never any evidence found of anything suspicious, nothing to link his death with my client. It was simply harassment. Revenge for Leo Jackson. I'd hoped Leatherbridge Police would have learned their lesson from that affair, and that my role on the police consultative committee would be seen as supportive, 
rather a hindrance. Lethbridge police have work to do, a lot of work, if they're going to rebuild their reputation in this community. I look to your own. Root out corruption and bad practice. Whatever it takes to restore public faith. <sighs> yeah, big talk, Council. Shame your son's up to his neck. But you can't go wading back in there unless you're absolutely sure of that. Or if you don't have anything to hide. It's a smoke screen. It's a shame your lawyer friend's got suckered in. Ronnie's not the kind of bloke to get involved with something he doesn't believe in. Oh, come off it. He's a solicitor. They do it all the time. Get the spotlight back to where it should be, on their own. Poor decisions. Yes, here we go. Look, look. Horror film festival. But it's the perfect way to spend Halloween. Oh, maybe, but you won't want to go on your own. Has it? Yeah, it's all sorts of weirdos, that sort of thing. You're sitting all alone, in the dark, really scared. <laughs> Get off me! It's just an idea. I thought maybe if you were at a loose end, we could... Me? I'm going to a party. Oh, right. You can come if you want. Oh, um, is it one of those dives, like your friend... Do you want to come or not? Yeah, I suppose. People will talk, though. Hey? Oh, no, wait, I'm inviting other people, too. Ready? Something's wrong. The baby? I'm bleeding. OK, Esther. It's going to be OK. Melody, another question about vascular necrosis. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no, everything you told me was fascinating, of course. Um, up or down? Well, for hygiene reasons, you might want to think about tying it back. No, oh, please, I need some help here. I'm going on a date and I haven't been on one for ages. So, who is this mystery man? Ah, so it's someone I know. No, well, maybe if I say his name... He'll what, turn into a pumpkin? You know, like in the story? Oh. No, this man is real flesh and blood. Ah, that's enough for me. Who's well, been trying to reach you? Something you need to see? Come on, you're on call. Yes, well, I am right here. Why doesn't she just phone? Sorry. Mm. She's through here. Hello, Esther. Hi. I'm Dr. Fenton. Hi. I hear you've had some bleeding. A little, yes. How many weeks? Eight. What do you think? Isn't he brilliant? Not now. Dr. Fenton? Do you know each other? Yes, uh, I'm going to need to examine Esther. What's happened? She's having a miscarriage. We don't know that yet. Oh, honey. Is he for me? If you need something to cuddle or punch, he's your man. <laughs> it might be better if we have a bit more privacy. OK. <clears throat> but they're not shy. This is the baby's mum and dad. Oh, right. <clears throat> Time for lunch? Sorry, not today. An apology would be nice, though. What for? Well, I've just spoken to the drug squad, and apparently their informants know where the stripe's coming from. And they're all singing the same tune. Quinn Heavily. And he's dealing the stuff. Worse than that, he's producing it. Well, I suppose the family farm is big enough. I just need one piece of evidence. So what's stopping you? Well, this morning, for starters, I, the minute I can't go anywhere near the place. Yeah, that could be tricky. But I can wait. Anything to wipe the smile off Ronnie Woodson's face. Yeah, but he's caught in the middle here. I mean, if Quinn goes down, he gets pulled right into the mess, right? It's not my problem. Jimmy? I know, I... Look, what I tell you is confidential. If you breathe a word of it... Yeah, you don't have to tell me that, all right? How is she? There's some spotting, but everything else seems OK. So you still don't know if it's a miscarriage? Well, just to be on the safe side, I'll call the Early Pregnancy Assessment Clinic, book her in for an ultrasound. And uh, well, what can we do in the meantime? Esther needs calm and rest. Did you hear it? Sorry. I'm going to go and check on Esther. You all right? Yes, yeah, my hand. You have told them? Nah. Well, Esther worry like mad. This isn't just about you and her. If you mean the baby, I'll be really careful. I won't drop my own kid. Tony, you know Huntington's is a hereditary illness. 
Yes, there's a slim chance the baby could have it too. 50-50. So the fairest odds you'll get? I'm not sure that that's the best way to look at it. You know, they're saying it's 50-50 whether the human race is going to make it for the next hundred years. Right. Means it's out of our hands, mate. You're talking about a child. Your child. And I don't want anything to mess it up. Look, this is probably my last chance. My only chance to have a kid. No, I understand, but Sally and Esther have a right to know. Well, you can't say anything. Patient confidentiality. Yes. Which is why I want you to do it. You have to tell them. Oh, now, is it DC Clay or Dr Clay? You should think about setting up a job share arrangement. You could be doctor by day, detective by night. I've had enough stick from Julia, thanks. Yeah, but it's my friends that you're stalking. Stalking? That's what you call it, isn't it? When you follow someone for no good reason. Oh, come on, George. No, come on, Jimmy. I'd love to hear your excuses. What, did the lovely D.I. Moore handcuff you and drag you down to the farm? Look, when I realised she was following Quinn, I didn't want any part of it. Well, that's a shame, cos it was too late for Alex. She spent the weekend in hospital. Julia said, I feel terrible. Yeah, well, you should, because the extra stress was the last thing she needed. Hang on, what about her son? What about the part he's played in this? Well, you don't believe all that stuff you read in the papers. I wouldn't have thought even you were that naive. No, naive would be thinking this is just some police vendetta. Do you really think the Quinn's got nothing to hide? OK, the scan is booked for 11 o'clock tomorrow, but call me immediately if there's any change. Thanks. You're scaring me, Piglet. Oh, please! Our baby deserves a nicer name than that. <laughs> OK. How about Scarlet if it's a girl? Oh, God, sounds like a lipstick. Oh, I think it's great. Scarlet Jackman. Jackman? Don't jump the gun. What do you think, Doctor? Oh, I just give medical advice. <laughs> what about Freddy if it's a boy? I like that. Good thinking, Batman. I'm going to go and make some tea. And I must be going. Goodbye, Esther. Thanks. See you, Tony. <sighs> she probably wanted Esmeralda or Atticus. Do you want to hear my second choice? Bungle. Freddy from Rainbow. <laughs> my favourite programme as a kid. Oh, your favourite programme now, more like. I've graduated onto Doctor Who, thank you very much. <laughs> Should be grateful I'm not suggesting sicko racks. Or ood. <laughs> <laughs> Alex has worked extremely hard for the community. She'd go the extra mile for anyone. Good for her. But Alex isn't a problem. It's her son. If she even got a whiff that Quinn was dealing drugs... She's a Tory councillor, for goodness sakes. You never heard of Tory sleaze? Oh, please, that's a bit cheap. She's not after a free parking space. And Quinn, I've seen his friends. He doesn't exactly hang out with a Tory boy. All right, I will admit he got in with the wrong crowd for a while, but that does not make him a master criminal. Your DI is on the wrong track. What? I hope so, for Ronnie's sake. If he's just doing this as some favour for the Havilies. Look, <laughs> Alex stuck her neck out for Ronnie when he challenged the police. That doesn't mean he's under any obligation, and I can't believe you would even suggest that. Just tell him to be careful. What? So you're giving advice now to my husband, an extremely experienced solicitor, and you've been what? Just remind me. A police surgeon for how long? Five minutes? This isn't quite how you imagined it, is it? Oh, I'm just being stupid. It's just when they start talking about names. Well, tell Esther how you feel. I did. She thinks I'm crazy being jealous of him. Mm. And Tony? He won't listen. Anyway, those two are as thick as thieves. They've known each other since they were 12. But you're the person that she loves. You're going to have this baby together. I was so happy. I really wanted to be a mum. Oh, I don't even know where I fit in. Well, now's the time to get it sorted out. You don't want to be feeling like this when the baby comes. Sally! Dr. Fancy, I'm glad you're still here. She's bleeding again. Hey, were you at this Halloween party last year? George said something about chatting up the wrong gorilla. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a blur. Yeah, the joy to work, do. No steering clear of them. I wish I'd thought of that before I committed to this party. So you say party? Kept me in. Did you just hear the word party appear from nowhere? <laughs> Years of training. So come on, who else is going? Uh, well, it's uh, one of Davy Hatton's do, so full of nurses, those types of people, you know. And uh, I've invited Melody. Oh, you and Melody. No. 
No. So I can come? Of course. Ooh. I went to one of Davies' parties when I was training. They're absolutely mad. You should check it out. Ah, uh, thanks, but no. Oh, that's a shame. We haven't let our hair down as a team in ages. And I seem to remember someone being really good at the old striptease. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Da, da. What? Can't anyone take a joke anymore? I'm a bit confused. The consultant said something about an implantation bleed. It happens when the egg implants in the wall of the uterus. But it doesn't affect the baby. No, no, it's usually nothing to worry about. There you go. I told you it'd be all right. Little Freddy or Scarlet's a real fighter. Let's give them a moment. Come on. I knew it'd all work out. It's like that bet I put on the National at the last minute. Odds were terrible. All still came through. This is a little more complicated. Yeah, the decision's made. Esther's going ahead with the pregnancy. Without knowing all the facts. We talked about that stuff. I told them my dad had some kind of dementia. That's hardly the same as telling them that there's a history of Huntington's. Oh, come on, Doc. What do you want from me? Do you want me to scare them? <laughs> Tell them about an illness that won't affect the kid for 20, 30 years. You haven't been a parent yet. You don't know what it feels like the first moment that you hold a child when you realise that it's your job to protect them. You would do anything to stop them ever feeling pain, ever being hurt. <laughs> no one can wave a magic wand, right? And it's terrifying. I mean, how do you think Esther and Sally are going to feel when they discover that you've lied to them? It won't come to that. You and Esther are close. How long before she notices the symptoms, starts asking questions? Let them make an informed decision about this pregnancy. It's none of your business. Look, you can be as irresponsible as you like with your own life, but not with theirs, and certainly not with a child's. Ah! Thanks for your meeting, madam. Thank you. Are you okay? You sounded a bit upset on the phone. No, I'm all the better for seeing you. What did I do to deserve that? Oh, just being a smart, wonderful, loyal husband. George? It's Jimmy. I just thought he'd be on our side over this Haverly stuff. All these friends with D.I. Moore, what do you expect? I work with him every day. But you're taken. No, I'm serious, Ronnie. My opinion should count for something. Well, obviously not as much as you think. Now, just be careful what you say in front of him from now on. Well, that's a bit overdramatic, isn't it? Well, no, if his loyalty's lie with even more, then that's exactly what you have to do. So, what does it mean? Huntington's is a progressive disease which gradually affects brain function, movement, memory and such. Must have been a real shock for you finding out something like that out of the blue. Not as much as you being nice to me. I feel bad. I gave you a really hard time. Uh, to Esther. Give her a moment. There's a lot to take in. Getting a diagnosis like this, it takes time to be seen, to get tests done, right? Yes, a little while. When did you first suspect you were ill? Why? Just thought it was the shakes at first, nothing serious. Before or after you acted as a donor for our baby? It's been a difficult day. I need to know. I see you every day and you don't tell me something like that. We were happy. We all wanted the baby. Why rock the boat? How could you be so selfish? What are our options, Doctor? If you want to find out if your baby is at risk from Huntington's, you could have a prenatal test at 16 weeks. Wade, yeah, the baby's got a really good chance. Just leave it, Tony. No! You wouldn't consider... I know you! Any problems, just come back and see me. I will, thank you very much. George, uh, what I said earlier. Forget it. Um, working here in the station, it kind of makes me feel a bit like I'm stuck in a middle. It's hard not to get involved. Uh, excuse me. Can I call you back? This isn't a good time. So we're calling. We've still got a lot to talk about, but we both feel the same. We want to keep this baby. Then I wish you well. Oh, I was so scared. 
I really thought you might not go through with it. Hey. You're the baby's dad. And you should have a say in its upbringing. I still need to buy those dungarees, remember? Stop. Listen to me, will you? It's not going to be like we talked about. What do you mean? Having a baby, it's not about rainbow and teddy bears. I know. I'll be more responsible from now on. You're going to have a lot on your plate. You need to concentrate on that. Sure. I still want to be part of it all. Let Sally and me concentrate on the baby. What are you saying? Maybe this isn't the best time to have this conversation. Esther, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I know. But I can't trust you like I used to. Please. Give her some time. Rule of gambling. Don't bet again, not when you're winning. I've known Esther since we were 12. When she makes up her mind. So it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to work to earn her trust again. But that's something you're going to have to do. You are the father of that child. I suppose that's one thing I do know for certain. And then some guy put on a Batman suit and he jumped out the window. Don't remind me, I want to get out of this party alive. Are you still on for tomorrow night? Even by my standards, they're a pretty mad bunch. Oh, I'm a woman of the world. I think I can handle a few nurses. Well, don't worry. Me and Arch will be there to hold your hand. You're coming too? Yeah. Problem? No. I'm all the merrier. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> Some kind of evil spirit he believes that Leon's possessed by one. Ever since I was a kid, I hated all this Halloween rubbish, okay? Dermatitis. I'll call the police. Were you asking me? Just me? Like a date? Yeah, date. Jack has her eye on a new job at Holby City but faces the interview from hell. That's tonight at 8. Next on BBC One, it's Dirty Rotten Cheetah. The one to watch 